guys and gals, it's um, Chris here, aka Craig Wooden. Uh, long story. Um, I own and run CraigTech.co.uk, selling aftermarket motorcycle parts. Um, I'm no vlogger, but uh, I've got a couple of videos up, which was not pretty. In fact, they're they're pretty shit. Um, I hope the information that I give is useful and helps people out. Um, Craig Tech is an importer of TST industry products. Uh, they're an American company, makes some really good stuff for the uh, MT range as well as other bikes. And um, I'm yet to find anyone else who is an authorised TST importer uh, to the UK. Um, but here we are. This video is the install of their uh, Mech GTR front indicators. Um, it's almost plug and play, thanks to some mods that... Uh, I here at Craig Tech have done to the uh, supplied products and I'll go for those and explain it uh, to you right now. This is the halo unit. You get two of these. Um, this is the LEDs around here. And as the name implies, it gives a halo effect. Um, kind of gone off pattern here, but while we're here, these are not uh, going to give you a beam that's going to illuminate the road. What happens is the wire at the side here, double backs on itself, the wire to the actual signal slots into the middle there as well, and then that halo unit, as it's referred to, then drops into, he says, drops into the housing and illuminates it up. Um, so as you can see, when that's in and lit up, um, it illuminates all the plastic. So around the signal of your orange LED in here, this lights up whatever colour the halo is. This stem arm here lights up. The edge of the lamp here lights up. So if you imagine that that's in your, in your mounting hole, you've got a nice little illuminated edge on the outside and then this sort of glows up. Um, glows up the colour of the halo light. Um, this is why they're not suitable for the rears. I might, depending how I, how I get on, bolt a little bit in a why these aren't suitable for the rears, but let's just stress that these are designed for the front. Um, and a little bit of video, which I, I will try and add on to the end, explains why they're, they're not ideal for the rears, but they will work with uh, some modifications. So back to what we get in the box. Your two Mech GTR front indicators. Your two halo running lights, your two OEM connector adapters that kind of make them plug and play, snap ratchet fixings, and quick splice connectors. Uh, these are original TST connectors. Um, however, like I've said to you before, they're an American company. The TST mech indicator is designed for the American bikes. American bikes come with a DRL function as standard, a daytime running light as standard, in that the indicators are on permanently. So when they turn the indicators on, they're on all the time, they then flash, you can't see indicators and it goes solid again. Um, I'm currently running that setup on my own bike as it is at the moment, uh, using a mod by Custom LED. So that is an option if you uh, if you want that uh, American type of fat. Um, but I'm removing that and putting these on uh, one, to showcase my product, and two, because they, they look bloody smart. Um, so, America, you've got three-pin connector. You've got your red, which ironically is your common, your ground. Your brown, which is your signal 12 volt to make the indicator flash. And then the blue here, which ordinarily is in the connector, that comes out. And what we'll be needing to do is to cut that end off, connect that using the quick splice connectors to a switch live, which I'll show you later in the video. But these... Connectors, red, blue, and brown. Connect to the red, blue, and brown on the OEM. And that gives you that which plugs straight into your indicator that you take out. And then we crimp that into our switch live. So we got two indicators, our two halos, our two adapters, our squid plus connectors, and the ratchet fixings here. Um, whilst um, I'm here, the O-ring, it says here, is for use behind the signal shroud. Um, what that does 
is when you're fitting it, you pop that into your mounting panel at the front, your coolant side or the side that doesn't do anything. You then fit that over like so. And then you drop the ratchet. That comes on, again, freed through the hole. And that drops down on top of there, claws in. And then to undo it, you just prise those out. Uh, actually, I think you pinch them in and then it, it'll just pull off. Real easy fitting, better than the uh, abomination that is the um, standard setup. Where you're losing fingers and thumbs trying to get the bloody things out. But this is what you get in the box. This is what you get supplied with by me. And hopefully the video, whilst um, I say I'm not a blogger, will give you a clear direction on how to install it. Here's what I use, a little 3 Allen key. And I find the root of my finger, pop it in, oh, bollocks, and drop it. Well, that's not the fucking way to do it, is it? Da-da. Um, this is it. That's how it comes. That's how it would be sat in the panel. I just push the end in, pulls out, and when you refit, you poke it back out the end, push it in, and that's how it refits. And yeah, four mil Allen key. Bumps off. And this pulls off the front, and off comes the scoop. Okay, side panel off. Um, switch feed on this side. Um, I've already got DRLs running on the uh, on the bike here. I'm just trying to find my keys so I can show you. But I've already got a custom LED product fitted here. That keeps my indicators on, orange all the time. And when signaling, they flash and then they stay on. So that's why I've already cut into my switch life here and why I've got these connectors here. I'm going to take all that out. But this here, this connector here, black wire, green wire, that's your horn. The green wire goes up to the button. The button then comes back down to the horn. Press it, it sounds. This is a constant 12 volts and it's switched live. So it goes off when you turn your engine off. On the other side, it's your yellow and brown wire, which is your 12 volt feed to your auxiliary cigarette socket at the front there. Again, it's under these. Uh, I think it's under the bottom one on the other side. But all this will be coming out because this is for... Um, the uh, custom LED and what I did on this is I fitted um, OEM connectors because I was demoing it and it was coming on and off um, it's not needed so I'll put a wire what I'll probably do is just trim that and use that to tap into Got a bloody bee in here now. So I'll keep that connected. Yours will just be a green wire of which you can just keep connect your quick splice connector to. Run the green green wire through there. Run your uh, blue wire from your TST indicators and just close it down. Uh, I'm going to be doing that on this red one here. I don't want to be crimping and undoing crimps too much. So what I will do is just connect it up. So, so this is the connector from the indicator. This is the connector to the bike. Plug straight on. And we're going to be connecting this to the green wire. I'll uh, demo it. I'll just hold it on like so. So you can actually see it working. I might be able to actually wedge that in. So that's the light. We turn it on, 
there's the halo effect um, looks actually a lot brighter on the canvas there's a bit of flare but that's going to be set up against that so you imagine you're just going to have the white white rim around the side and then the actual light illuminating and then when we signal the halo extinguishes and on comes the indicator and that is proper bright actually i'm pleased with that so that's as, as simple as it is connecting it up you'll use the quick splash connector i'll uh, board something up because i've already cut into it and then you just fit it to here what you will do is obviously is fit it first and we'll, we'll go through that now i'm doing this ask about facebook i just wanted to show you early on in the vid what it looks like so what we'll do now is we'll re remove the indicator and i'm going to roll this kind of live time um this is just a panel that's bolted into the radiator when you're doing these back up be mindful not to overdo them um Mine have been on and off quite a lot. I've done a lot to the bike. I've made a couple of videos. And uh, what I have done previously is strip the thread on the inside. Because this bolts into the rad. The rad's only aluminium. It's a 5mm Allen key. And once this is off, if you've got your coolant bottle. Yeah, forgot about that. So that should let me just pop off. There we go. Yeah, fucking coolant everywhere now. Brilliant. Well, my mistakes are your learnings, but there we go. So here we have the indicator. And then you may well be well versed in what an absolute shitter these are to remove if you've done your tail tidy. Now I've not I've never had my fronts out. Uh, so we'll see how this goes. But there's a little rubber panel there and these push out to get off the lugs for this black indicator retaining plate. And I can see I'm going to have some fun with this. I'll leave the camera rolling, it might be entertaining at some point later to watch. These push out the way but they have to go right back to free out. There we go. A retaining plate like so and obviously it goes all the way in and then comes all the way out so there's a little tire up there and it might actually be a metal clip that needs undoing and then this is a sort of resistor assembly and again I think that's tie wrapped on round there so that all needs coming off. This whole thing will then come off there and then we can get rid of the indicator. It will pass us through the hole. Let's see how this lot comes off. So I've not had these off before, but there's a little clip under here. These seem to be bolted to. And with a little flick of a screwdriver, I reckon they'll just come out. Don't want to be doing that and scratching my carbon panels, eh? That's not cool. What? What is holding that on? It's like it's been taped to and moulded to. That whole thing. Let's give that a bit of a squeeze now. There we go. Yeah, hopefully you can see that sort of clipped in. So once I've uh, got it out, and then here, that looks plastic as well. Excuse my noggin a minute again. Can't see what that looks like. That will just undo one of these tire up jobbies. in it is actually a pan. There we go. Off. And we have a screw in there. Which in turn clearly needs to come off. It's got the correct size screwdriver for that. 
kids have been messing around and uh, they're all full of mud. Apparently it's hilarious to dig them into the garden and help mum with the garden. Oh, probably edit that a bit. O-ring. That gives you a bit of vibration dampening. That goes over the indicator and pushes down around the housing. Like so. Claws facing in, as I've already alluded to, but not sure if that would be edited because I got it wrong. Slides over and that clamps down like that. And you push that in. These little clips here, if you push them out, that's as simple as it is to take it off. So a little bit each side. Click there. That's about it with my clicks. That is fairly solid. That is not going not going anywhere. Quite pleased with that fit. Wiring rise. This is all tucked up out of the way. You've got your connectors here. It's all pretty much waterproof. They're tried and tested. If you just want to tuck that all the way in there, then you can run this back under. I don't know how that went. That's actually a zip tie, so I don't think that is ever going back in without a lot of messing about. There you go, he's done it. Pull that up through, tighten that down, tuck those cables and connectors behind there, and that is ready to go back on. Oop. Still there. Yeah, refit in this pen. These are the two that hold the front cover on, which in turn hold the scoop on. You just drop that into the top, push the panel together, and pop. And that is it. Bob's your uncle. Fanny's your aunt, and all the rest of it. So, what we're going to do now is cables we've pulled through. Pop. Let's join them all together. Blue, red, brown. Get this all tucked out of the way. As I said before, mine looks a bit of a mess because I have had this in and out. I've got here my self counseling indicator unit here and um, I've got here this is my prototype of my version 2 of my plug and play module for people fitting aftermarket master cylinders probably plug that in every video that I've made um, around here somewhere is our indicator connector only goes on one way you can't get it wrong and like I say, I need to join that to that. Right, so I've not had enough room to put the quick splice connector in there. So I've put two bullets on. That's all joined up. Wires all tucked away. Or will be. And then turn it on. There's our halo effect. And then there's our indicator. Now, um, just bear in mind, uh, not bear in mind, but something to note is the old flashing when they come on. That's not that's not an indicator uh, function of these. That is a self test of the self cancelling indicator. So yours won't do the indicator flash. Um, but that is the install. The other size is exactly the same. 
uh, but the blue wire of our feed goes to the yellow and brown wire which is in the connector there's two boots like this on the other side this bottom one i'm sure it is is a uh, connector which has got the yellow and brown wire which feeds to the auxiliary socket all we need to do is we have a quick splice connector feed in the uh, brown and yellow feed in the blue clamp it down Look, here we go once again other side fuses um, again this is the daylight DRL that I fitted but here's your OEM can indicate a connector tucked up at the back here and here is your yellow and brown wire for the uh, switch live feed for your DRL so I've uh, connected mine up as I say to the custom LED this is going to come out yours will all just be one straight line um, but I'll uh, cut that and refit it you just need to take your yellow and, br yellow and brown wire and connect it to your blue wire of your TSTs so there we have the finished product a nice tidy almost miniature LED installation but it really does suit the bike's looks very well if I say so myself I just uh, I think everyone's seen them running on Tim's video but for completion what's that look like you're not going to see that very well in the daylight because of the camera angle that's quite a nice little effect I like that and then you've got left blinker and right blinker and let's see hazards I like those Obviously the, uh, the DRL, the halo effect, will be much more prominent and uh, effective at night. But that is it, gents. Thanks for your time. Any questions, get in touch. www.craigtech.co.uk or email me direct at chris at craigtech.co.uk. Should have the answers to any questions you may have. Until next time. All right, hopefully just a quickie to show you how the rear So Stress again, these are designed for the front, but they've got the shaping and the brackets and everything that comes with it. So they fit the rear. What does that look like on camera? So on camera, you can see that this will sit up against my tail tidy, but all this plastic here is going to be on show. The halo unit sits in the top here. And there's little lugs there that the um, the bit that creates the the um, halo glow sits, it pushes in the top and sits flush here down to these tabs. So all this back bit here and this bit, everything here is going to illuminate as well as the surround of the light. So when that's fitted in the back there, you're going to have a red glow. And for it to look any good, you're going to have to tape up or black out what you can see on the other side of your tail tidy there. Then you have the wiring and um, this is the electric gubbins that works it will all fit in under the tail tidy there and run into the back of the light where you connect it to your original indicator sockets again they're designed for the front so the rear is here the cable from my experience is probably going to be too short it's going to need extending and also you'll need to wrap up all this because the halo unit connects here that there will then all be exposed to all the shit being kicked up here so once the halo's in, you need to tap up or sleeve this entire length, probably extend the ends here and black up what you can see on the underside. The final issue is you need to make sure, let me just focus that. 
you need to make sure that your plate is narrow enough for you to actually see the indicator. This is a 7x5, it's the smallest legal plate you can get. Uh, not 7x5, sorry, it's about an 8x6. It's, it's, it's a specific measurement. It's the smallest legal plate you can get and mine fit in it. If you've got the standard massive plate that comes with it, you're not going to see your indicators. So you'll have to make sure that you've got one of these, um, you know, you'll get away with a 7x5 on the road most of the time and get a smaller plate and get that. Otherwise, it's like I say, you're not going to see your indicator beyond your number plate. It sounds like a right old faff and that's because it is, because it hasn't been designed for the rear. They will fit because it's the same housing. They'll fit because the wiring up's the same. You've got your ground here, you've got your signal that goes to the indicator for it to pulse and flash and then you've got your DRL live there which you probably pick up from your brake light. Um, I've got some quick splice connectors come in so for any connections you just put them in, pair of pliers, click it down so there's no actually cutting and stripping of, of cables needed but if what we're doing here is fitting a really good looking tidy bit of kit designed for the front and making it work for the rear so it's up to you if you decide that you think it's worth it. Plenty have. I had five sets, so I've only got three left, so people are liking the idea, but these are just concerns I want people to be aware of when they're ordering them as a set for front and rear. Yeah.